Hello everyone, uh, the senior radiologists who are conducting this Sonobus conference. Um, first of all, I would like to thank everyone for giving me this opportunity to present my research paper. So I am Dr. Saurabh Singh, third, uh, third year junior resident, who is the presenting author. I'm presenting the research paper titled as Sonographic Measurements of Scrotal Wall Thickness. My corresponding author is Dr. Sahil Gandhi, who is a senior resident. We are from Department of Radio Diagnosis, Bharti Vidyapit Medical College, Sangli. So the basic aim was to reduce the norms, established norms of scrotal wall thickness, which is a wide range uh, of 2 to 8 mm. We wanted to reduce this wide range. And second was that we were suspecting that the scrotal wall thickness has a major role in uh, thermoregulation of spermatogenesis, which in turn can, uh, uh, can be a major cause for infertility. So this study estimated the scrotal wall thickness in males above 21 years of age. So we took the sample size of 50 in males above 21 years of age. Our reference showed that normal scrotal wall thickness ranges between 2 to 8 mm. We were trying to narrow this wide range because no such study has been conducted before in this region. It was a pilot study. Aim to study the scrotal wall thickness and to establish norms among male population above 21 years of age with help of ultrasonography. This study will help to suspect cause in patients of infertility as thick scrotal wall since it plays a ma major role in thermoregulation dependent spermatogenesis. Materials and method, we conducted it in BVDU Sangli. We selected 50 cases above 21 years of age. We took the informed consent before starting the study. Scrotal ultrasonography was performed using the linear probe basically and curvilinear probes were also used with standoff pad after allowing some time for the dartos muscle to relax. We allowed some time for the dartos muscle to relax and then we used a standoff pad. Standoff pad was not available. So we, uh, what we did is we put a jelly, we filled a, a pair of gloves with jelly and we used it as standoff pad. So what is the role of standoff pad is it helps to better evaluate the superficial structures. It increases the distance between the transducer and the area of interest that is the scrotal wall and it places the area of interest at the level of the focal zone and also it reduces the reverberation artifacts and gives a good resolution picture. We can see in the further uh, slide, uh, I have shown uh, one case. High frequency, we ex we also excluded the patients with varicocele, scrotal skin conditions, inguinous scrotal hernia, hydrocele, and subjects who were not willing for this study. So we basically excluded the patients who were having scrotal or testicular diseases and who were not willing. So we used a linear probe. We measured the wall thickness in both uh, uh, scrotal sc uh, sacs on three surfaces, anterior, posterior, and lateral. We measured on three uh, surfaces, anterior surface, lateral surface, and the posterior surface. We wanted to see if this also plays a uh, role in determining the scrotal wall thickness. So here we can see this is a standoff pad. This is the right anterior, right lateral, right posterior. This is left anterior, left lateral, left posterior. We place the outer caliber uh, in the innermost portion of the outer ecogenic layer. Then we put, put the innermost caliber in the innermost region of the scrotal wall. We put the in, inner caliber in the innermost portion and the outer caliber in the inner surface aspect of the outermost ecogenic layer to avoid the uh, discrepancy of the results. So this, are the, this is the result. We can see the table. The anterior mean thickness on right was 2.87 millimeter. Anterior thickness, uh, mean thickness on left was 3.01 millimeter. Anterior, uh, lateral mean thickness on right is 3.04 millimeter. Lateral mean thickness on left is 3.11 millimeter. Posterior mean thickness on right is 2.89 millimeter. Posterior mean thickness on left is 2.81 millimeter. So we uh, converted these table into more understandable tables. So we can see that average mean thickness on right is 2.90 millimeter with minimum and maximum ranging 1.6 to 6.6 millimeter. Average mean thickness on left is 2.93 millimeter with minimum maximum ranging from 1.8 to 6.6 millimeter. Um, anterior mean thickness on right is 2.87 millimeter. Anterior and posterior mean thickness on right is 2.89 millimeter. Anterior mean thickness on left 3.01 millimeter and Posterior mean thickness on left is 2.81 millimeter. We can see the minimum and maximum ranges are somewhat similar. 1.5 to 6.3, 1.5 to 6.8. These are not varying much in all the three tables. So what we concluded is in our study, we found that the average scrotal wall thickness ranges between 0 0.94 to 4.86 millimeter on right and 1.03 to 4.83 millimeter on left. These are also not varying much. So there was no statistical difference between anterior posterior lateral wall thickness on ipsilateral side as well as on contralateral sides in healthy males above 21 years of age in our region, Western Maharashtra population. 
therefore we conclude that there is no need to take three different wall thicknesses it is unnecessary we had five males who had scrotal wall thickness greater than 5 mm and were taking infertility treatment but since the sample size was low it needs further studies however this has to be interpreted with caution as the sample size is small this was a pilot study which has not been done before in our region our conclusions have to be supported with further studies so this is a pilot study it can act as a pioneer for further studies so discussion the scrotal wall composes of the skin that is wrinkled appearance since there is no subcutaneous fat there is uh, just inside the skin is dartos muscle that is the tunica dartos that is major uh, responsibility has the major responsibility for thermoregulation inside that is external spermatic fascia just inside that is cremastic muscle and fascia and the innermost layer is internal spermatic fascia so dartos muscle is a smooth muscle cremastic muscle is a striated muscle the tunica dartos acts to regulate the temperature of the testicles so that uh, testicles are required in an environment that is 2 to 6 degrees cooler than the body core uh, what things are res responsible for it is we will see in the further slide the temperature is regulated by the scrotal wall it is not simply a house that it is not simply a pouch that houses the testes it it has an active role for thermal regulation how the, there are four layers responsible for it the tunica dartos smooth muscle the striated cremastic muscle the absence of a subcutaneous fat layer i told you earlier fat is responsible for heat loss and abundance of sweat glands that helps in removing the heat from the testes the tunica dartos is a smooth muscle that lines the scrotal skin giving the skin its characteristic wrinkled appearance so it is reported to play an important role in thermoregulation um, it changes the surface area by contracting and relaxing depending on the temperature is low or high respectively when it is low contraction of the dartos muscle occurs and it reduces the surface area of the scrotum and blood flow to the scrotal skin and it prevents the heat loss when it is high the dartos relaxation causes removal of excessive heat we postulate that if the thickness or tone of this muscle is more it contributes to scrotal wall thickness and it can lead to re reduce thermoregulation and spermatogenesis causing oligospermia or asthenospermia this could be a cause beside the varicocele that has been established cause of male infertility already ethnicity and topical hot climatic adopt Uh, adaptation must uh, be playing a role in it also it has been established that subcutaneous fat layer is absent in scrotal wall which can uh, help thermoregulation and lifestyle diseases like obesity can cause lipodeposition scrotal wall so these things were not considered in our study and they, it requires further studies in this region thank you uh, these are the references again i would like to thank you sonobus community for giving me this opportunity thank you so much